So apparently, our forefathers believed in creation. They believed in a God. But Satan says, I'm not happy about that because he has remembered that Satan's big lie against God turns out, and I'll tell you what it is in just a moment, there's a big lie against God. But in heaven, when Satan said, I shall be like the Most High God, the only way he could be like the Most High God is to get followers and people who worshipped him, people who honored him, maybe even in spite of themselves. So the big lie that Satan brought to the United States of America in our early years, which he had brought it before, of course, to other countries, but this Christian nation to deceive us was the lie of evolution. So we begin to build, can you imagine, man builds schools, and then we get so big in our schools and so knowledgeable that we know more than God knows. So suddenly there is no God. We get so smart, we talk ourselves out of God. So even when I was a kid in school, uh, when I was a kid in school, uh, we were taught evolution. Did anybody else here taught in public school? Some of you go to public school? You were taught in evolution. My brother Tommy, he's six years older than me, we went to a little grade school, and he was a smart one in our family. He always made straight A's, made it the rest of us live tough because our folks say, now you better do better too. So <clears throat> Tommy made straight A's, but in the eighth grade, uh, he had a test. And back then, they weren't, uh, uh, evolution hadn't evolved to where it is today. So back then, it was really simple. The test was, where did man come from? And you were supposed to put from monkeys, <laughs> right? Now, that's a long time ago. And, of course, we're in the middle of nowhere down there. But anyway, they wanted you to say that you were not created by God. So Tommy told my folks, and they said, you don't have to put that. Just say that you were created, man was created by Jesus. And he wrote that on his test, and the Christian principal gave him a, pardon this word we use at home, a whooping. Right? Some of you know what a whooping is. It's a lot different than a spanking. If you've never had it, if you had my dad, you'd know. Anybody have a dad that gave you a whooping instead of a spanking? All right. You know the difference in. That whooping is just a lot more fierce. I'll tell you, that's, that's a serious one right then. You, you, you have some serious time before you can sit down right. So the teacher gave my brother a whooping at school, though he was a Christian, because he wouldn't answer, and they flunked him in the course. Now, what happened is Satan came here. He, the lie of, it, the, of, of evolution is being taught in a Christian nation. All Satan wants is the honor and glory and praise that God has. Am I right? And so what happens when people... Now, and, and, and pardon me because I know God has people in all churches, but when we, we worship Satan in spite of himself, if we worship his day, for instance. Satan came in and said, the Ten Commandments, all right, I, I don't have a problem with the, with the other Ten Commandments, but I sure do with the fourth one. So I don't want people keeping the fourth one, so he replaced it with, the, with, with what? The seventh day to what day? The first day, basically, right? Because that's what people say. I'm amazed at how many people say, oh, we keep the Sabbath. We go to church every Sunday. They, they do. They, they honestly, they say, oh, well, we believe, you know, we keep the Sabbath. We, in fact, only a week or so ago, I had a guy say, you know, you guys are right about the sa Sabbath. And I believe you. And I'm a Sabbath keeper. I keep it every Sunday. <laughs> now, he was serious about it. You see, what happens if, if, if people... Satan only wants our homage. He wants our praise. He wants people worshiping him. So he came to this earth, and his tactics is not changed since heaven. So what he's doing is getting followers. So when we teach evolution as a Christian nation, and when we are not keeping the holy seventh-day Sabbath and replacing it with his day, then he's getting the homage and the praise that he wants and feels that he deserves, and he's on top of this world. In fact, I think the Bible even says something like he's the prince of this earth. But his time is short-lived. And so what happens is Satan, instead of trying to kill all the people like happened during, with the papacy in the dark ages, where something like, I'm told, 50 to 75 million people lost their lives through the, in the name of God, name of Christianity. One of the first things I put in the book is that someone, I heard someone say quite a while ago, no one loves doing evil more, uh, as, as happily uh, as, as someone doing it in the name of God. And, and uh, let, let me word, see if it's right here in the very beginning, how we wrote that down, Dwight. 
because I think it's important when we begin to think about it. It says, I, um, I once heard one, so, someone say, no one seems happier doing evil than someone doing it in the name of God. And uh, I say that, that, that is deep. What happens, I just saw about two months ago on the news, I saw a, a, a suicide bomber. Somebody videoed a suicide bomber, had all the bombs on him, got in a car, was heading in Iraq, was heading to literally explode himself and kill people, and they were having a party. It looked like they were on a Sunday picnic. Everybody was waving. He was happy. He was laughing. He was driving away because he was doing evil in the name of God. He thought he was doing this for Allah, right? He was doing this for his God. The same way today, well, back in the dark ages, in the name of, 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 of religion, how many millions of people were killed in the name of God? People felt driven to do it. I had a man come to my house a few years ago. He came and, and just showed up at my house. And he said, he said uh, uh, I, I opened the door. And he said, uh, Danny. He looked very normal, talked normal, acted normal. He said, Danny. I said, yeah. And he said, hey, man, where do you want me to put my things? So I looked at him and I said, what things? And he said, well, my clothes and everything. I said, I don't know. What do you mean? He goes, well, the Lord sent me here. He said, the Lord sent me here. And he said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm moving in with you. So I looked at the guy and I said, you know, well, he looks all right. He sounds normal. Just what's coming out of his mouth is not normal, <laughs> at, least, at least to me. So I said, well, look, aren't you married? He goes, yeah, I'm married. I said, do you have a family? Yeah, I have a couple kids. And he had a fairly new truck. I said, you have a job? Yeah. But I don't care about any of that. He said, the Lord told me to come here. I'm moving in with you. So I said, well, actually, uh, that, I don't think that can happen. I told the guy, I said, that's not going to happen right now. I was a little stronger than that. But I said, uh, I'm, I'm on my best behavior right now. So I said, basically, that's not going to happen. And uh, so he said, well, yes, it is. The Lord told me to come here and, and to serve you. And I said, well, I don't need any servants. And he said, oh, well, pardon me for saying this, but I took the leisure. I got here a little bit ago, and I walked out, and I looked into your garage, and it's a mess. You need somebody to clean it up and work for you, and I'm supposed to do that, he said. And I said, well, I agree with you. The garage is a mess, but that's not going to happen. So he said, he said, well, listen, I need to come in and take a shower. He said, can I take a shower? So I'm like, what am I? I love watching you on TV. He said, I, I sing like you. I look like you. And I said, I'm sorry. And uh, he said, I can, and, and, and everything, he said. Hey, look, our shoes are, you got shoes, uh, I got some at home, the same color as yours, he said. And I said, okay, this guy, there's something wrong, right? I don't want to say like he's bananas or something, you know, but, but he's, something's wrong with this picture. So, but he's serious as can be. So I try to be as nice as he can, and I don't know exactly what to do. So I say, well, okay, I, and, and I've, I wouldn't do it again, but this case, I said, all right. He came in, took a shower. I heard a lot of noise going on in the bathroom, like glass shattering. So the door opened up. He said, hey, uh, Dan, hey, uh, man, everything was Dan, man. Hey, Dan, man, he said, uh, come here just a second. I said, yeah, and he said, uh, can you look in here? I said, yeah. He said, uh, I hope you don't mind. I had a little problem. The shower doors that were glass was all in the floor busted. He said, I... Um, I knocked your shower doors. Is that okay? I said, yeah, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Because I say, okay, I'm dealing with somebody I'm going to have to be careful of now. So I said, that's okay. So we go outside, and he wants to do something. He's going to fix something for me, and I tell him I don't need to. But anyway, finally, he says, you know what? I'm going to get my dad to come over here. He can help too. I said, where's your dad live? He said, well, he lives over in uh, Missouri. And I said, that's a good idea. I think you should go see your dad. So I said, he said, how do I get there? I said, just go west, you know, just go on the road, go west. Just, well, where do, where, do, I said, just go west. Trust me, you'll eventually end up in Missouri.